Hello, my dear. I don't think we've ever met. I'm Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator. I like to explain to people having a re haven't had a reading before that I see, hear, feel, sense, know. They talk to me, but they also show me pictures, and I call it spiritual charades. And I try to describe the picture to the best of my ability of what they're trying to get across. They never waste a message. So even if you don't understand it right now, you might remember it later or see it later or somebody else will validate it for you and they'll understand what, what it means. This is not an exact science. It's sometimes you got to think outside the box a little bit. They give me, they give me just enough that they're hoping that you will understand what they're talking about because the details are none of my business. So it's, it's, uh, it's not for me to understand the whole thing. It's just for you to understand. They, uh, I always ask people to send me questions that they that they would like answered, but I cannot promise that they'll answer. It's up to them. It's I consider this their show. They tell us what we need to hear, maybe not always what we want to hear. So, um, okay. He says, I love you. This is not your fault. He says, this is all, all in me, all in me before you came along. My struggle, my passion, my demons. My lack of security. He's talking about as insecurity, not as. I did not want to leave. Could not get my shit together. have dead. He said him and his dad are going to go hunting together. I don't know if they ever did that. I I know Brandon and I, the, the day I talked to him, he, uh, I kind of talked to him like a grandmother. There was tears and he, he was a sweet guy. He's just, he was hurting about a lot of things. Do you have a grandma that has passed? He's saying he ran into your grandma. Now he did, I've already done a little reading for Chelsea. He did have his grandma with him. But he's talking about running into your grandma. She's a sweet lady, but she's kind of bossy. <laughs> so that ought to distinguish which grandma it is. All right, he says, he says the baby has already seen him. I don't know how old the little one is, um, but I will say children and animals, especially dogs and cats. I'm not sure about other animals, but children and dogs and cats for sure. They can see them, hear them, play with them because in, until they get to the age where they know people are going to poo poo them or, or somebody kind of tells them their imaginary friend isn't real. Uh, you can't do that. They, they will see them. And the baby, he showed me the baby is little, fairly little. I don't know how the baby is in diapers. 
actually laying on its back and waving its arms and laughing because he's right there. He's right there playing with it. So if you see the baby, like playing with somebody that you can't see, believe me, it is. And he will be the and Brandon will be there. Tell her I can hear her. I can talk to her. So you're gonna you're gonna hear him. And I can't promise you're gonna understand the words. Sometimes, um, usually it's a higher up, like an archangel or something. I get a real high pitched screech in my ear. That's usually a higher up one. So you might get a low, but it'd be one ear, not both ears. So it, when you get that, or you might just hear muttering or mumbling in one ear. Well, I guess you could you could hear that with both ears if he's not just right up on your ear. I better take that back. It's not 100%. So anyway, if you get the high pitched noise, tell him, I can't understand you. You need to slow down, lower your vibration a little bit. He's got to come down. He's got to come down to our level. And, okay, he already told me this in the other reading. The second he left, right before he left, he saw his grandma, or a grandmother type figure anyway. And then his dad was standing further back behind. He says, I know I should have chosen another course in my life. I couldn't make the pain stop. He says his un feeling of unworthiness was on him, <clears throat> excuse me, on him and nobody else. Hang on, I can't hear you. The, out the outside influences were not going to make me happy. I needed to be happy in here. And only I can do that. And he already sees that. When they go up there, um, I know we're taught that there's all this judgment and we're going to go to hell and all this stuff. That's not true. I've never, ever seen that, ever. That's not true. You're loved. You're cleansed. You're forgiven. Actually, not. I wouldn't even say forgiven because it's they don't feel like when you get up there, they don't feel like you did anything wrong. And I'm not just talking about suicide. It doesn't matter what it is. You're taken care of and cleansed. And like I tell people, it's like peeling away an onion, the layers of an onion. When we get up there, they start peeling away all the crap from earth so our soul can shine again. So it's pure again. So we have to, they have to, sh I don't know how long it takes because they don't have a clock. They don't have a calendar, they, they, you know, but, um, so he's still working on that and he, he, he said almost immediately he knew what he'd done wrong, not as far as the act of suicide, but as far as what he should have done different for himself in this life. He said he's already seeing that. He says, what I did by my own hand was my choice and nobody else's. It was mine. So give that to me. Let me own it. I need to heal from that. And I will say as a medium, 
I've never heard one say that they were glad they did it. Never. Because the, when they <clears throat> when they get there, then they look, I'll say look down. They don't really look down. And they see how much their single pain caused pain for so many people out there. And they realize that that's truly not what they wanted to do was to hurt everybody else. They just wanted their pain to stop. He's, he says he says he was selfish by doing it, but personally, I don't feel like they're selfish. He said the pain wouldn't stop. There wasn't enough beer in the world to make the things in his head stop. I will say he's he's not sad. He's he's not happy that he did this. He knew the second he did it, he shouldn't have done it. But he's not sad. He's he's with his dad. He says, again, he's going hunting. They're going hunting. And uh he's he's showing his grandma again. He 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 hasn't shown me any other family members. It probably doesn't make any difference. They show what they need to show, what they feel like they need to show. <laughs> he says, you're going to feel him touch you. Don't get freaked out. And he was shown earlier that it would be like a finger, like the end of a finger poking on you. Just... And some people, I don't, I don't know how you'll feel it. Some people, it might feel warm in that spot. You may not even feel the pressure. Sometimes, once in a while, it feels like a needle stick in me. It just depends on who they are. It depends on how you receive the energy. I can't say 100% exactly how you're going to feel it. But he is going to kind of poke, poke, poke. You're also going to smell a certain cologne that he used to wear in. And you'll smell it. You could be walking through the store. You can be in your car. You can be sitting in your house. And you get this little whiff of that whatever cologne he wore. And that's him. And whenever you get the poke or you get the cologne or whatever, when you see the baby, um, not waving, but playing with something that you don't see, Validate him, acknowledge him, tell him that you know that that's him. Thank you for stopping in. I love you. And you'll start seeing more signs. And I always, I always tell, tell my guys, my people, to uh, let's have some nicer signs instead of the stomping around the house and slamming cabinets and people think their house is haunted. And it's not. It's usually grandma or somebody stopping in just trying to get your attention. He says, nobody is to blame but me. It was my choice. Let me have it. He means let him have the choice that he made because it was his sole choice alone. I don't think I said this in the beginning, but I don't know if I told you, but I've been through a very close suicide. And I know the coulda, woulda, shouldas, what ifs that drove me crazy for years. And they still do sometimes. It's not like cancer or heart attack, you know, losing somebody to something like that. It's unless somebody else has been through it, you cannot possibly understand. So don't expect people to understand your grief. They, they can't because it's different. And uh, you, just, you just learn how to live with it. It's just you just learn how to live different. My guy that did it, he's now one of my helpers. He's one of my guides. He he helps me with my work. That doesn't happen very often. But well, he's always on my left. I know some of these videos look backwards. He's always on my left. Even other people see him sometimes. There's somebody standing next to you. Yep, that's Bob. 
that uh, so he will be around to help. This is still okay. He can hear you. He can see you. He's not going to be haunting you, so don't don't get spooked. He's just going to let you know he's there for support. So talk to him. I promise you, 100%, he can hear you. He says, I love you, baby girl. I'm not sure he's talking to you, but somebody there. But he did say you made him happy. And then he, and then he goes like this. He says, like a roller coaster. He says, sometimes I couldn't take any more, but that's me. Let me own it. All right, he's talking about, I'm not, I'm not real hip on a rock and roll up, up on it, but I think it's Guns and Roses, Sweet Child of Mine. He's talking about that song. And I had asked him that earlier, um, if there was anything else he wanted, like at the funeral or something. And I heard Guns and Roses. Now I'm hearing Sweet Child of Mine. So he says, don't spend too much money on it. It's not worth it. I'm already gone. He wants you to be happy so you can make the kids happy. Don't let them forget that they are mine. Uh, he's showing me a vehicle, and it's like he's, he's kind of like a, it's not like a van. It's kind of like the smaller SUVs, if you want to call them that, that he's getting out of. He's slamming the door, and there's music cranking. I mean cranking. Stereos going. And then he stands there and goes like this, with a big old smile on his face. I don't know what he means by this. I just give whatever he gives me. He's handing you a single red rose. And he's saying, thank you for putting up with me. I know it was hard. He says, the blood is on my hand, not yours. And I think he means that, if you want to say metaphorically, I don't know if that's the right word I want to use. He doesn't mean that physically. Let me take back what is mine. Please be kind to others. He's not saying anything. Um, <clears throat> I don't think he's going to give me a lot of validations, like proving that it's him. And I know you haven't had a reading from me before, so usually I ask him to give me two or three things to prove that it's them, so you know it's them. So hopefully by what he's saying, you know it's him. Because my readings are more about them getting their message through and not about me proving I can do this. Because I don't need to prove it to anybody. He's telling you not to let somebody take advantage of you. <clears throat> he says, don't, he 
Don't let them take advantage of you. Evidently, somebody you know. I don't think he's talking about further down the road. He wants you to be happy. He is happy. He he is very calm, relaxed. He no longer has all those little wires in his head that were kind of all tangled up, you know, kind of confused and he says, I'm with my dad. We've worked it out. I understand now. I always wanted to go home. He means that is home. It just wasn't coming fast enough. I just wanted to go home. Okay, I think he's leaving. Um, so I hope there anyway there was something in here so you know for sure that that was his messages. And I totally understand what you're going through, so uh, don't be afraid to reach out. We're people that have had to go through somebody doing this. Um, we're all in the same boat. We truly are. And it's not a very nice boat, but we all got to stick together because nobody else will understand it except us. love you you're going to know he's around he's going to make sure and i'm sure he'll do more later once he gets the hang of it gets calmed down and things get get to going <laughs> if you want to call it that see you later thanks for allowing me to be his voice